Hey everyone, in today's video, we're talking about one of the most generous benefits available to retirees, spousal benefits from Social Security. If you understand these rules, it could make a big difference in the amount of benefits you receive, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Devin. On this channel, I break down Social Security and make it easy to understand. If you want to understand these rules, then use them to your advantage. This channel is for you, so be sure to subscribe and click that notifications bell so you won't miss anything. And oh, hitting that like button is always greatly appreciated. So let's jump into this. According to the Social Security Administration, there are 2.3 million people receiving part or all of their benefit as a spouse of an entitled worker. Now, some of these spouses don't have any work history but are married to an eligible spouse. And others have benefits of their own, but they're eligible to receive a higher benefit because of their spousal benefit amount was greater than their own benefit from their own work history. Again, in my opinion, spousal benefits are the most generous benefit available from the Social Security Administration because you don't even have to do any work to receive them. You simply have to be married to an eligible spouse. Now, at face value, these spousal benefits seem pretty easy to understand, but once you dig in, there are a lot of nuances that can lead someone to getting a smaller benefit than they are entitled to receive. So in this video, I want to break down this topic into three separate sections. I'll discuss what a spousal benefit is, what it takes to qualify for spousal benefits, and then I'll cover how to calculate spousal benefits. Fair warning, this may be a longer video than most of the videos I publish, but there's no fluff in this. You need to understand everything in this video. I took out all of the material that was extra or didn't really add good value. You don't have to watch all of this video at one time though. In the description, I've timestamped the topics, so you can either watch this in segments or you can come back and revisit specific areas as needed. So in the most simplified form possible, a spousal benefit is defined as the highest of your own benefit or up to one half of the higher earning spouse's full retirement age benefit. Now this is all adjusted for filing age and we'll get to the specifics of the calculation later, but you should know that it's not either your own benefit or one half of your higher earning spouse's benefit. An individual's benefit is often a combination of a spousal benefit and your own benefit. So let's walk through a quick example to illustrate this. Now, it's important to remember that the Social Security Administration rules are gender neutral, so the scenarios that we discuss here are going to work either way. So let's look at two scenarios, one where there is only one spouse who qualifies for their own benefit and another where both spouses qualify for a benefit. So first, let's take a couple who has the following benefits. The husband has a benefit at full retirement age of $2,000. Since the wife never earned the required 40 credits, she does not have a benefit of her own. However, as long as she meets the eligibility, she could receive a spousal benefit of one half of her husband's $2,000 at her full retirement age. So she'd be eligible for a benefit of $1,000. Now this next scenario sounds very similar, but I want you to pay attention because there's a slight nuance here that will matter when it comes time to calculate these benefits. So let's assume again that the husband has a full retirement age benefit of $2,000. This time, the wife has her own benefit of $800. Now remember, at full retirement age, the lower earning spouse can get the greater of his or her own benefit or one half of the higher earning spouse's benefit. So in this case, the wife is still eligible for a total benefit of $1,000, but she'll receive her own benefit of $800 first, and then a spousal top off of $200 to get her to that full thousand she's eligible for. These are two separate benefits all rolled into one. However, they are separate. If you file early, they are reduced on a different rate. If you file after full retirement age, one is increased and the other is not. But don't worry, we're going to cover all of that and get into the weeds on the specifics of those calculations. So let's talk about what it takes to qualify for spousal benefits. You can qualify for benefits from a current spouse or an ex-spouse. 
the rules are fairly similar, but there are a few differences and I do wanna break those down separately. So let's talk about qualifying for benefits from your current spouse first. As long as you've been married for 12 consecutive months, you can qualify for a spousal benefit. Now, there are two exceptions to that 12 month rule. The first is if you marry someone who is the mother or father of your natural child, and the second is if you were entitled to benefits from another spouse in the month before you were married. In either of those cases, the 12 month waiting period does not apply. One thing to note here is that before you can get a spousal benefit from a current spouse, that spouse has to file for his or her own benefit first. Until they file, you'll get only the amount you have from your own work history. Another important notation is that the earnings limit applies to these benefits if your spouse is under full retirement age. For example, if you are receiving a benefit from a spouse and they make more than the income limit, their benefit will be stopped. And along with their benefit is all benefits paid from their benefit. So now let's look at the rules for an ex-spouse. This is slightly different and I wanna get into these calculations, show you how to do it the right way here. You can qualify for a spousal benefit from an ex-spouse as long as you were married at least 10 years and you are not currently married. Two key differences with the rules between eligibility from a current spouse versus an ex-spouse is that with an ex-spouse, the higher earning spouse does not have to file first as long as they are 62 and the divorce has been final for at least two years. So you don't have to wait for that ex-spouse to file before you can get your spousal benefit. Again, as long as that ex-spouse is at least 62 and the divorce has been final for at least two years. The second difference is that if your ex-spouse earns more than the income limit, it will not affect your spousal benefit like it will if you were married. These rules are there to keep the higher earning spouse from causing financial harm to the lower earning ex-spouse. So now that we know what a spousal benefit is and we know what it takes to qualify, let's take a look at how it's calculated. Right off, I want you to know that your own benefit and your spousal benefit are not calculated the same when it comes to reductions for filing early or increases for filing later. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna make the assumption that you are the one who will be receiving spousal benefits here. In the center, we have your filing age. To the left, we have the reductions or increases to your own benefit from your work history. And to the right, we have the reductions or increases to your spousal benefit base. Just remember, this is the base amount, which is half of your higher earning spouse's full retirement age benefit. Let's also assume that your full retirement age is 67. And that's for anyone who was born in 1960 or later. If your year of birth is before that, that's okay because here in a minute, I'm gonna give you the monthly amounts where you can do this calculation on your own. So at full retirement age, you would receive 100% of your own benefit. You would also receive 100% of your spousal amount. But if you file a year early at 66, you would receive 93 and a third of your benefit and 91 and two thirds of your spousal amount. At 65, it would be 86.66% of your benefit and 83 and a third of your spousal amount. You can see that difference in reductions between your benefit and your spousal benefit continue to widen all the way back to the earliest age of filing, age 62. The other notable part of the difference is that your own benefit will increase if you delay filing, but your spousal amount will not increase. Again though, I want you to remember that when you're looking at this chart, we are showing the reductions to the spousal benefit base amount, which is only one half of the higher earning spouse's benefit. So just to make sure we are very clear on how a spousal benefit will actually be reduced, let me walk you through an example where we use dollars. Again, assuming that the higher earning spouse has a full retirement age benefit of $2,000, then we'll take each year of filing eligibility from age 62 through 67. Just remember there's no benefit to delaying beyond full retirement age or 67 is what we're using here. And finally, we'll look at how much that spouse would be entitled to in terms of dollars. 
So at 67, you're entitled to 100% of your spousal amount, so $1,000. At 66, this would decline to $917 and would continue to decrease all the way back to age 62, at which point it would be $650. It's interesting to look at the actual percentages here. We like to throw around the 50% number with a spousal benefit, but with the penalties for filing early, this can get reduced all the way down to 32.5%. Let's break this down with a few examples to clarify. First, let's assume again that the higher earner has a full retirement age benefit of $2,000. And in this case, the spouse does not have a benefit of her own. As a spouse, she is entitled to the spousal benefit amount of $1,000. That's the amount she'll receive if she files at her full retirement age. If she files at 62, that amount would be reduced down to $650. So let's change the scenario a little to something that may be a little more common. Assuming again that the higher income earner has a full retirement age benefit of 2,000, but this time the spouse has her own benefit of $800. From our conversation so far, you've probably already figured out that she is still eligible for the same $1,000 because a spousal benefit is equal to your own benefit, or up to one half of the higher earning spouse's benefit. But here's one key difference for this example. They would pay her benefit first and then finish it with the spousal benefit. As long as she filed at her full retirement age, she would still receive that same $1,000 because there are no reductions to either her benefit or her spousal benefit. But let's go to the chart again and see how different age combinations would affect each of these benefits. To clarify, at 67, her own benefit would be $800 and her spousal amount would be $200. If she filed for these benefits at 62, she would receive $560 for her own benefit and $130 for her spousal amount. But what if she wasn't eligible yet for the spousal amount? This would most likely be due to her higher earning spouse not having filed yet or maybe something else. But remember, they have to file before you can get your spousal benefit from them. In this case, if she filed at 62, she would only receive her benefit of $560. And then once she became eligible for a spousal benefit, let's assume age 65, her age at that point in time would determine how that portion would be reduced not her age when she filed for her own benefit. So if you want to figure out these reductions or increases for yourself, here are the monthly numbers. Because I know not everyone files at 65 or 66 or 67. Some people file at 65 and three months. So there are three separate bands that apply. There is the more than 36 months from full retirement age within the 36 month window of full retirement age and then after full retirement age. For the band of more than 36 months away from full retirement age, both spousal and your own benefits are reduced the same, 5 twelfths of 1% per month. Within the 36 month window, spousal benefits are reduced by 25 36 of 1% and your own benefit is reduced by 5 ninths of 1%. After full retirement age, spousal benefits are not increased at all but your own benefits are increased by two thirds of 1%. Now I know we've covered a lot of ground in this video, but I hope it's helpful when you're planning how to file for social security. Just remember, this is your retirement. Stay curious, stay informed. You're making the right moves by watching heavy videos like these, but don't take this as specific advice for your own situation. Keep doing your own research, talk to your own advisors, but most importantly, continue to educate yourself and stay curious. You can further your learning by subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. You can just click this right here to do that. And then you can watch the video you see on the right hand side of the screen as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button if this was valuable for you. Hope you have a fantastic day.